question seven. <laughs> okay. The diagram shows a surface consisting of a horizontal part of A and a plane AB. The type plane has integrated to horizontal. I don't understand what's going on even now. A particle is projected from O with speed U at an angle of theta. Can they not give us any particular values in this? At an angle of theta above the horizontal, it hits the plane at point P with speed 14. At last, a number. And at right angles to the plane. Ooh, interesting. 1.4 seconds after projection. Right. That's important, isn't it? That, that right angles to the plane. Because now we know something about the actual direction of the particle after 1.4 seconds. So we've actually got quite a lot to work on in just that little bit. That hitting it at right angles was really crucial to us. Without that, we would have been in big trouble. So, I, I started by doing a little sketch of this. There's the plane, and here's the particle hitting it. That's the speed that it has at the point that it hits it. And because this angle here is 70 degrees, I marked on here that that angle there would be 20 degrees. Because it would be, wouldn't it? Because there's, there's a right angle. That's a right angle. That's 70. That means that's 70. That's 20 degrees there. And I thought that was quite helpful for me. Now, remember, with projectiles, in the horizontal direction, our initial, the, the horizontal component of the velocity to start with doesn't change because there's no acceleration in the horizontal direction. So if I think horizontally, after 1.4 seconds, I've got that u cos theta is the same as 14 cos 20 because that's the horizontal component of my velocity. So I'm starting to get some, some things together. I've now got what u cos theta is. That's good, because if I could find the, that's the horizontal component of that, isn't it? I want to find the vertical compo component as well, then I can find my initial velocity. So I need to think in the vertical direction now. Now what's going on here? I've got that, um, I've got an initial vertical velocity of u sine theta. After 1.4 seconds, I've got a vertical velocity of being well, this would be after 1.4 seconds, it's going down, isn't it? Because it's hit at 90 degrees. So I have minus 14 sine 20 as the vertical component v. That's a crucial thing that that's negative. But we noticed that it was actually travelling downwards at the point that it hit the plane. Um, and my acceleration is minus 9.8. I'm taking it up, this is being positive. So the equation that I get here. This is, this is V equals U plus AT. I've got minus 14 sine 20 is U sine theta minus 9.8 times 1.4. Which gives me, now I didn't write this down up here, but this gives me U cos theta is 13.156. And u sine theta, if I rearrange this, is 8.932. Well, that is good news. Because that is my initial speed. There is u. There is theta. This is 8.932. This is 15, what did I say it was? 13.156. And so my resultant speed is the square root 
of 13.156 squared plus 8.932 squared, which satisfyingly comes out as being 15.9 that they quoted in the question. And if I've got this to go on, then to find theta, I want to do the tangent delta because that's the opposite of the adjacent. So tan theta is opposite over adjacent. Is that the way around? Um, I think you took the vertical and it was the horizontal. Oh, horizontal I've written these in the wrong places, yeah. haven't I? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. You're right. So u sine theta is that one. That's the opposite. So that's 8.932. And that one is 13.156. I got away with it with u. But these should be upside down. <laughs> so that is 8.932. Giving us theta is 34.2 degrees. Great. Um, now, part two, find the height of P above the level of A. Right. So we need to think about how we can do this. Now, I, um, there are a couple of ways that you can go about doing this, actually. Um, one of which is to use, uh, to use energy and to say that the increase in gravitational potential energy is equal to the, the loss of kinetic energy. And that would be quite a sensible thing to do. Um, I didn't do that. I continued to use the same kind of ideas I've used for that bit. So I said, if I'm thinking the vertical direction, I've got my initial speed is u sine theta, which I now know is 8.932. I'm looking at what happens after 1.4 seconds. My acceleration is minus 9.8, and I want to find out the vertical height, I want to find out the displacement at that time. So I'm using s equals ut, half a t squared s is 1.4 times 8.932 plus a half times minus 9.8 times 1.4 squared and that gives me 2.9 meters. It is perhaps worth pointing out that you could also have said that my um, my loss in kinetic energy, a half m 15.9 squared minus a half m 14 squared must be equal to the gain in gravitational potential energy, which is m times 9.8 times h, using the fact that m cancels out all the way along. You solve that to get h equals 2.9 in the same way. So I think that's probably just as good a way of doing it, actually, isn't it? Um, and I've written 2.9, but I think it's actually 2.90, isn't it? I think it's, that's not an exact figure. Sorry. Right. Part three. The particle... Oh, no. The particle now rebounds. <coughs> the particle next lands at A. So it's... It's done its flying thing, it's hit there, it's rebound a little bit and dropped down and landed at A. Right, there we go. Um, find the value of B, the speed with which it rebounds. So thinking about how we might tackle this, um, again, I, you know, the, there are loads of different ways that you could do this. My instinct was to say, here it is, it's hit the wall. If it hit it at 90 degrees, it will rebound, rebound at 90 degrees. So here we have it departing from the wall at an angle of 20 degrees. And if we just think about our vertical 
stuff that's going on, we now have an initial speed of, um, of v sine 20. It's going to fall a distance of uh, 2.9 meters, so an axis is minus 2.9, with an acceleration of minus 9.8. And it's going to do that after a certain amount of time. So I'm going to find how long it takes for it to hit the ground. This is minus 2.9 s equals ut. Minus half gt squared which gives me that. Um, what did I do next? And, I'm trying to remember what I did, what did I do? We should edit this part out. Well, maybe we should edit this video. Yeah, yeah. No. Well, I've now done that. I'll take the video. No, they can't know that Matt's Dave is not infallible. I've now done that. Yeah, but Matt's Dave is raw. He's, you know, you've got to have a camera. What? Raw. Sounds yeah. really bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's really bad. That definitely is getting crowded video. <laughs> um, okay. So, we've also got the axis going to be minus 9.8 meters. Yeah. Right. Oh, that's it. Sorry, I, you know, I've, Where did that I've, come moved, from? I've moved down into the bottom corner of my little diagram. Here we are. So we had... This is the plane. That's 70 degrees. That's 2.9. And that's the distance that it's gone. There we go. I'm all right now. I've, I've done it in a... I was squashing it at the bottom of a page, so I got it in the wrong order. Do you recognise that triangle? This is this is the triangle where it's colliding at P. There's P. There's A. I've dropped a perpendicular line down because that's 2.9 meters. Okay. So this distance, the horizontal distance that we've travelled, is that distance there. And using my triangle, um, tan 70 is opposite over adjacent. So that, that distance at the bottom is 2.9, there we go, over tan 70. So this bit, sorry, which I haven't properly labelled in my working out as to where it come from, this bit is my horizontal working out, which says that if I'm going in that direction, my distance, 2.9 over tan 70, is equal to my horizontal component of my start velocity times t, okay? Which gives me t as being, if I do 2.9 over 1070 divided by v cos 20, I actually get 1.123 over v. So that is the time in terms of v. <coughs> If I sub that time back into this equation, I get minus 2.9 is v sine 20 times 1.23 over v, 1.123 over v, minus a half g, 1.123 over v squared, which isn't the nicest equation in the world, V cancels. It takes a little bit of playing around with. You eventually get an expression for 1.123 over V all squared. You then square root and you then take the reciprocal and times by 
and eventually you get to V is 1.37 meters per second. Now, I did say that was not necessarily the best way of doing this, or the only way of doing it. That was the way that I did it. Um, there was a method using the equation of, a, of the path, and using that to sub things into... Um, there were, the, the mark scheme gives three different ways of doing it, of which that is just one of them. Finally, part four says find the coefficient. Where are we? Find the coefficient of restitution between the particle and the plane at P. Well, the coefficient of restitution is speed of separation divided by speed of approach. You were pretty much stuck if you hadn't done earlier parts, I and mean, if you hadn't had sensible values for your answers for earlier parts, because there's not a lot that you could do if you hadn't found the earlier wrong. But the speed of separation is the speed at which the particle leaves the plane. 1.37. The speed of approach is the speed at which the particle strikes the plane. We were given that in the question. It was 14. So the coefficient of restitution is 0.098 by 1.37 divided by 14. Of course, you do get the mark if you do your answer to part 3, if you had an answer to part 3, divided by the figure that was given in the question. And that. Wait, because this is the end of the paper, I think really people fine. feel inspired to applaud. That's me.